Hey, what's up guys? Gypsy back here today for NPL Week 2. And this week we're facing off against the Ace of Base in his Anaheim Altarias. I've known Noah for a while now, and yeah, he's really progressed into a very solid draft player. And um, he's made his way up from minors, so props to him from that. It's going to be fun to face him in uh, in the majors this season. I haven't faced him since, uh, since a long time ago in, in a league that we were in together back in the day. So yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how he's grown as a player and... Um, He's, uh, he's drafted a really good team. I, I like Noah's team a lot. I think it's probably um, it's probably one of my favorite teams in the league, to be honest. Uh, you, you guys see there, he's got the Mega Gallade, the Thundee Eye. Uh, I love Thundee Eye as a Zemon. Like, in particular, I think that's one of the one of my favorite electrics next to Coco and Zapdos. Um, those are the only three electrics I really enjoy using. Um, but, yeah, I think Thundee Eye is amazing. And um, then he's got Togekiss, which I think is a really solid fairy, and a mon that I'm really keen to try out at some point. And then uh, Lolan Muck, which <laughs> you guys know I love Lolan Muck. Um, Laddie S, which is a fantastic, a fantastic uh, team support mon. And then he's got, uh, yeah, he's got threats like uh, Domanitan and uh, Miss Magius with really solid grounds in Seismitoad and Stunfisk. Uh, yeah, just a very solid team um, with a lot of spooky, a lot of spooky options to, that he could potentially bring in this game. Um, the mons I'm really expecting to come here are uh, for sure going to be Mega Gallade. Uh, well, potentially Mega Gallade. I, I'm thinking he'll bring it, but it's it's possible he may not. Um, but uh, yeah, Mega Gallade, Thundee Eye, Togekiss, Muck, um, Seismitoad, and probably going to be Mismagius because uh, I don't have a ghost immunity and he may feel that he can spam Mismagius to stab versus me. So those are the mons I'm thinking. Obviously, you got to account for everything. Um, and, uh, you know, you can't sleep on stuff like the Manitan coming because if that comes and, you know, you don't prep for it, then you're going to be in a bit of trouble there. But, yeah, he's definitely got he's definitely got a few threats that uh, really pose a lot of trouble to my team. So we're going to jump into the team builder here and going to go through the team that I brought this week and, uh, yeah, see how it went. So first one you guys see here is uh, Mega Metacham. So... We are, we are a sub-3 attacks variant this week, and uh, the nice thing about this Medi is um, his his team has very limited meta champ switch-ins, basically, uh, basically like a defensive Latios. This is only uh, switching outside of Miss Magius to a high jump kick. Um, Togekiss is okay, but it switches in and then gets bobbed by Ice Punch and outsped unless it's scarfed, so it's not the greatest of meta champ switch-ins. Uh, he could be like defensive Yachi, I suppose, but if I'm like poison jab for some reason, it's just uh, it's taken out. So he doesn't have the greatest switch into the Mega Champ at all, and uh, that's going to make uh, sub a really valuable move potentially in this game. Uh, because if it comes down to a situation where uh, he's likely to sack him on to Medi, I can always sub on the predicted sack and uh, be in a really solid spot. Um, as he's forced to bring something in to break the sub and as a result take another hit from Medi. So yeah, sub Drain Punch have some nice uh, synergy there. But um, yeah, sub also eases prediction with um, uh, Miss Magius if he does bring it because he may opt to bring that as a kind of high jump kick switch in <laughs> if he's fearing me bringing that. And uh, yeah, that's going to really put him in a tough spot because if I sub as he, as he goes into Miss Magius, uh, he can either stay in and try and break my sub with Shadow Ball uh, as I 2 a with Ice Punch into Bullet Punch or just Oko with Ice Punch if he's in range or he's going to have to switch out into something else and take an Ice Punch into a Drain Punch. So, yeah, Medi is uh, a real threat to his team and a very, very solid looking modern matchup. So, uh, the next one we have here is the Clefable and this Clef set is pretty interesting. Uh, Carmine Knock. Now, Knock is predominantly here to remove the item from Muck and the item from Seismitoad. So Calm Mind obviously speaks for itself. It's, it's a wink on in itself. Um, being able to set up on a lot of his passive stuff. If I can knock Empoleon's lefties off, it's no longer a Clefable check. And I can Calm Mind up on his flash cannons. They won't be doing too much <laughs> once I get a few boosts up. Um, Calm Mind also means I beat Laddie unless it's Calm Mind Psyshock. Uh, it means I beat a uh, non nasty Plot Thunderous, which is really nice. Um, and Mega Galay does not want to switch into Boosted Moonblast at all. So, yeah, this is just a very solid one versus his team. Um, Domanitan is also another potential Clefable switch in, and if I can knock that off uh, on the switch, then he's going to be severely crippled there. Um, but really, the main uh, drawing card with the knockoff here, like the main purpose on the team, is to support my Aegis Slash. So, knockoff, like I mentioned earlier, it knocks off his fat mons like Seismitoad, 
uh, Empoleon, which are the two kind of biggest roadblocks in my Age of Slash performing well in this game. So if I can remove their source of uh, residual recovery by knocking off their lefties, that's going to be uh, that's going to really prove uh, really prove big for my AG in the back. So yeah, Clef really uh, really a team player in this game. Uh, Magic Guard is so nice because um, on paper, like unaware, looks amazing here. Being able to check Mega Galade and Thunderous quite nicely with a mixed spread, um, <laughs> but. Uh, that, that, as a result, is likely to attract Toxics from things like Seismitoad, from Empoleon, potentially, from Stunfisk. And Magic Guard, Calm Like Clef, abuses, abuses that kind of strat to the end. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really going to, uh, going to uh, kind of screw him over if he attempts the Toxic of my uh, potential unaware Clef. So, if I can even, I don't know, disguise the fact that I'm unaware, like avoid switching hard on rocks, I can kind of maintain that illusion. Obviously, if I show soft boil, then the gig's up, but <laughs> it could potentially catch him. Uh, but yeah, not Clef, amazing in this matchup. Removing items is going to be clutch for my AG uh, putting in the work. And speaking of AG, we have uh, Big Papa right here. So we got Swords Dance, uh, King Shield to attack. So we got Iron Head and Shadow Sneak. Now, obviously, like Iron Head is resisted by <laughs> Empoleon and uh, the Seismitoad and the Stunfisk too. And Shadow Sneak is not too strong at all, especially because you see I'm not like I'm adamant, but I only have 96 uh, attack investment. So I'm not like I'm not like max attack with like a life orb or anything. And the reason the reason I've opted for this this kind of set with AG is that uh, like I mentioned, the things that resist Iron Head, they're gonna be they're gonna be pressured by Clef. They're gonna have their probably gonna have their items knocked off, or they're gonna be or they're gonna be pressured by Metacham or Garchomp, as you're gonna see coming up. Which means that Every time they switch in on AG, assuming the item's been knocked off, they're taking that ship. They're taking rocks, and then they're taking an iron head. And uh, you know, granted, I'm not going to set up an SD until I'm comfortable that I can like take them out. So, say they're at 30, I can set up an SD and bot them with sneak if I need to. Um, but uh, ideally, you know, mid game, I'll be uh, using this thing to just chip them down with iron head on the switch and uh, positioning AG slash to sweep in the late game, which can do uh, fairly well because. Um, yeah, his team does not appreciate Edge Slash uh, whatsoever. He has Muck, of course, um, but I am creeping Muck a little bit if unless he's like max speed, which uh, could definitely uh, come potentially. Um, but I do have King Shield to uh, you know lower the blow of knockoff um, against my Edge Slash, and uh, if he does try and pursue me, I can King Shield uh, the pursuit, give him the minus to attack drop, and then switch out and take very little from his uh, his pursuit there. So. Yeah, Aegis Slash is amazing. Uh, Shadow Sneak destroys the Gallade. Um, if he's taken, like, I think one or two rounds of Rocky Helmet, he's in range of a neutral Shadow Sneak. So that's that's pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, plus two, this thing becomes a real menace to his team, particularly if Rocks are up, because then Darm, stuff like Darm is dying. Um, like I mentioned, his Thundee, his Gallade. Um, uh, well, Thundee, Thundee uh, needs to take a round of Life Orb after Rocks to be in range of plus two Sneak, but. Uh, the really nice thing about AG is that uh, with all this spit F that I have, I can uh, I can comfortably take hits from Thunder. I'm like nowhere near to a KO by Life Orb Thunderbolt in my shield form. I can proceed to SD up. Like I can set up all over Thundee, um unless he's like plus two Gigavolt Havoc or something. Um, but uh, I even live that actually, which is ridiculous in shield form. So um, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, but I, th I feel like in this matchup, his Thundee is either going to be Life Orb with um, like a Life Orb breaking set, or it's going to be some sort of Z move to break past Unaware Clef, which uh, is really sort of my biggest counterplay to Thundee uh, on my team. So yeah, I really think Thundee will be a, a kind of set dedicated to checking Clef or breaking past Clef, which is going to allow AG to abuse it that much more. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that, that's AG here. It's looking like a pretty solid wink on, and uh, if anything, just a really nice uh, threat to his team. So, uh, the next one we have is my Yachi Chomp. So, Yachi, Yachi Rocks Chomp. Uh, again, bringing Rocks Chomp uh, because this, this mon is fantastic. And, uh, like I mentioned, getting up Rocks is critical here in, in uh, helping AG put in the work, as well as uh, helping Medi and my Nihalego at the end. So, with this spread, I am not okayed by a Specs. Uh, I think it's like Specs Dazzling Gleam or something like that. Um, I'm Yachi, so Ice Punch from Glade cannot kill me. Uh, Hidden Power Ice cannot kill me from Thundee. Um, I live like plus two Hidden Power Ice uh, from Thunderous. Um, Muck uh, is Muck cannot check me with Ice Punch, and I destroy it with Earthquake. 
Um, it's a very solid check to Dimanitan as uh, I outspeed max speed Adamant Dimanitan uh, whilst outspeeding uh, max speed Timid uh, Togekiss in the process there. So yeah, Garchomp is amazing. Uh, a real reason why I wanted Yachi was in a lead scenario versus opposing Empoleon leads. Then maybe like Shuka Ice Beam, um, this Garchomp can check that. I don't have to fear get uh, you know getting killed by uh, you know by an Ice Beam on turn one there. So yeah, very very solid one here. Yachi uh, has a lot of uses in this game, and it's not just limited to, to Empoleon. It can be used for Gallade and Thundee too, as well as Muck uh, if I really need to switch in on that. And Latias too if he runs Ice Beam over over uh, Dragon coverage here. So. Another reason why uh, this Laddie is, uh, this uh, Edgy is really nice is because I can set up all of Eladias. I can set up all of Eladias, all of Togekiss, um, barring an Encore set, because um, Fire Blast is doing very little to me. It, it's not to a KOing, basically, like it's, it's um, unless he's like offensive. If he's a defensive set, which I do expect him to be, uh, this Edgy Slash can set up on uh, Togekiss. Uh, Stone Edge here is to uh, cripple the Togekiss as well. Um, it, it's going to have a hard time defogging if I'm firing off uh, Adamant Stone Edges. And even though I don't have max attack, I still have a ton. <laughs> this is actually stronger than Jolly Chomp. So, yeah, this is a very, very solid one here. Uh, next, we have uh, my Unaware Quag. So, this, this Quag is basically here to check Muck. <laughs> um, yeah, Muck can't beat this Quag. Um, infestation Toxic. Uh, could be a little bit annoying, but I still do a KO with EQ and uh, Curse. Like if he's rest, if he's like infestation, rest, toxic, sleep, talk, uh, I, st I three, I, I uh, two a KO or three a KO him with EQ, so he can't actually beat my Quag. And if he's a Curse variant, which I think is is very very possible, like it's it, there's potential for him to bring Curse. This Quag can check it every time. Ice Punch breaks the sub on this Magius, um, and. It also hits Thunderous and uh, Togekiss for really good damage, as well as Latia. So he can't. None of those mons can sub up my Quag, which uh, they may have been able to do had I ran like Scald or Waterfall or something. So that's important. And uh, catching catching something on his team like Latias with a Toxic, catching uh, Thunder or Togekiss with a Toxic as they try and switch in on on a relatively passive Quag uh, is going to be really solid here if if it does come down to that. Uh, also, Seismitoad does not appreciate it being toxic and it just further whittles it down in, in range of Aegislash. slash so the last one we have here is my scarf nihilago so this this one again you see the knockoff here so we've got dual knock with clef and nihilago so two very unlikely knockoff users but again it serves the same purpose as clef because his his likely responses to or switchings to uh, nihilago and his team are going to be stuff like stunfisk stuff like uh, empoleon stuff like seismitoad all of which are roadblocks to my swords dance age slash um, you know, running through his team. So knocking off those, weakening them with Thunderbolt, and uh, obviously I don't have Grass Stab on here because I opted to go knock off over Grass coverage, but because Seismitoad is a free switch into, like a, like a fat Seismitoad is a free switch into my Magic Guard Clef every single time, it's essentially a free Carmine with Clef too. I'm happy with just knocking and then switching into Clef <laughs> because uh, I, I'd rather have T-Ball coverage for Empoleon, uh, which also hits... Um, Togekiss for reasonable damage, then go for Grass Knot here. So and, and hit Polyon for like nothing. <laughs> so basically, Dazzling Gleam allows me to hit um, the uh, Mega Gallade as well as the Latias for really solid damage, a really solid chunk. It's a two-ko on Gallade uh, unless he's like a really fat variant, and Latias takes at least like 40 from from Dazzling Gleam. So that's pretty solid. I can always potentially sweep like uh, sweep late game with a beast boost on this Nihilego. So yeah, that's going to be the team. Uh, I'm pretty pretty happy with this team. I um, especially the Age of Slash set. I, I really like it a lot. Um, if he's a slow muck, I can uh, I can kill him with uh, plus two Iron Head after he's taken one round of rocks. So that's pretty nice. That's going to be the team. I'm going to pause it here and yeah, we're going to jump into the match and see how it went. All right, guys. So we're back here with the game and. Uh, I'm going to be recording this on on a different browser than Chrome this time, so hopefully you guys will notice that uh, the recording doesn't actually lag because, um, yeah, there's a bit of a bug on the new Chrome update from what I understand, and it's causing the replays to, to lag, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty nasty when you watch it back, so hopefully this is going to be nice and clear and uh, normal in this replay, so we're going to get into it. As you can see, uh, Ace has opted not to bring the Mega Gallade, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I think Gallade is pretty nice in a lot of matchups, but the fact that I've got Clef and AG really does force him to run certain coverage and uh, does force him to play around the potential of Unaware Clef, so I can understand why he didn't bring it. 
And at the same time, if he really expected me to capitalize on or to prep around, uh, to heavily prep for Mega Gallade, he, he may have uh, brought mons that can really take advantage of uh, sets that I have to bring to check Mega Gallade. So that's a potentially really strategic decision by Ace. And uh, I'm going to discuss that more as we get into the game. We're going to see uh, how he kind of constructed his team. But just looking at his team at matchup, he, he did indeed bring the Muck, the Togekiss, the Thundee, and the Toad, which were four that... I thought he really did have to bring to this game. Uh, Laddie was a bit of a wild card. I mentioned earlier that it could have come. It definitely had a shot of coming. Um, could be one of his defensive responses to Medi, even though it's not really a defensive response because Medi has very few checks in the game and Laddie isn't really one of them, but it can switch into a high jump kick and threaten me offensively uh, as it does outspeed me the next turn. Though it risks, uh, you know, switching in on an ice punch. So he has to be careful about that, but. The mon on the end, Sceptile, is a real uh, is a real interesting uh, bring here. So <laughs> I really was not particularly expecting Sceptile, but you know we have ways of dealing with it, of course. Um, and depending on the set that Ace brought, it could pose a bit of an irritation to uh, my defensive mons. I mean, just just looking at kind of thinking about it from <laughs> from a logical perspective, like special attacking Sceptile, like standard offensive Sceptile, doesn't make a ton of sense versus me. Like yes, it, it's good versus stuff like Quag and Coon, but it's checked easily by stuff like Nihilego. Uh, it cannot kill Medi, and Med Medi kills it in one turn. It cannot kill Chomp, and Chomp kills it in one turn with a Z move. Um, it's pretty weak against Ag. <laughs> Ag basically sets up on it, um, and something like Carmine Clef um, really abuses Sceptile. So it's going to be interesting to see what sort of set that is. But going to get into the game. Going to click off the replay uh, right now as we lead off with Chomp. As I mentioned in the team builder, leading, uh, leading Chomp and getting up rocks is essential here. The fact he doesn't have Empoleon means that uh, I don't have to worry about a Yachi lead, um, I, my Yachi Chomp losing its uh, berry turn one to an ice beam from a potential sugar Empoleon. And uh, I can potentially preserve that for a plus two nasty blood thunderous, or even just ice punches from Seismitoad or ice beam if he's brought that on uh, his Latias. So that's pretty nice. It also helps me versus potential ice, muck, ice punch muck, which uh, could be nice. So. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Garchomp is EV to live a Specs Dazzling Gleam from this Togekiss, so even if he is Dazzling Gleam, I don't have to worry too much. Um, I can easily take one. If he's Scarfed, I'm going to live, of course, and uh, I can even take a Crit Scarf Dazzling Gleam, so that's not a problem. And I can, uh, I can, I think I could take it if he's, um, yeah, if he's like Timid, I think I can, I can live a Crit uh, Scarf Dazzling Gleam there. Um, but I really do think this is going to be a bulky toke here, so I'm going to uh, hit Stone Edge turn 1 because if he is an off like a fast uh, max HP toke kiss, he will be too a code. And uh, if he wants to switch here into Seismitoad, I'll get valuable information, potentially getting a long-term chip if he's not lefties. And uh, I'll be able to get my rocks up the following turn, so he is actually going to switch out here. He's going to go into Toad. He has to respect the Z Rock or the Z Iron Head or the Z Poison Jab. Going Toad covered all those three uh, possibilities. And it gives him information on my chomp as well. It does show that I have edge. So that that implies that I may have uh, I may have the Z Stone Edge there. So he has to he has to really think about that during this match, which is nice, uh, which is a nice kind of uh, advantage to have in this game. So now I'm going to get up my rocks as he is uh, actually going to stay in and go for his own rocks. So getting up rocks, uh, I'm really actually happy with this trade because yeah, whilst rocks is kind of annoying for Nihilego. <laughs> Medi doesn't care about rocks, Clef is immune, Ag doesn't care and gets uh, gets lefties back, Chomp doesn't care, Quag doesn't care, so <laughs> if you look at his team, uh, everything is really affected by rocks, barring the Toad, and even the Toad that nullifies his lefties for one turn, so that's really nice, and uh, this turn he is, uh, he's revealed to be a lefties Toad, so I'm just going to pause it here, he's revealed to be a lefties Toad, which implies he's defensive, um, and even if he is like offensive Toad with lefties, he cannot break my Clef. And him going for Toxic here is probably his best play. Like him staying in and attacking, either clicking Earthquake, Ice Punch, or going for Toxic there, covers me going, um, staying with Chomp and attacking, or going something like Medicham, which is something I could have done there. But as you're gonna see, I'm gonna switch in my Clef here on his Toxic. So we're we're making these uh, making these nice plays early game. And uh, like I mentioned in the builder. Knocking off either his Seismitoad or his Mux item is going to be really important in Aegis Slash, putting in the work uh, mid to late game. So right here, I'm going to click Knock as so he does bring in his Muck. And the fact that I've revealed, the fact that I revealed to be Magic Guard and that I was so willing to switch it in on um, Seismitoad and the fact that I'm not Stealth Rock's Clef implies that I could be a Karmine variant. So he, he's going to kind of panic. Like, 
you have to you have to respect Clef in that situation. You have to go out to the check, and that is Muck. So we knock off his his black sludge there, which is really solid. He's now in range of plus two Iron Head from my uh, my uh, Aegis Slash, which is really nice. And uh, this turn I will be able to switch out into my Quag. Quag's Rocky Helmet is uh, not as needed this game um, because he doesn't have the Mega Galate, and this Muck is really the only thing this Quag needs to check. Granted, it could be used to check. Uh, Thunderous lacking Grass Knot, so that's, that's nice. I can keep this thing pretty healthy. Um, but you're going to see this turn, he does unfortunately get the first turn uh, Poison Touch, so it's going to be uh, a little bit annoying for Quag, although it does mean that if he is a Toxic Muck with like Toxic Rest, he will not be able to outstall this Quag. I will always be able to EQ, even if he's a Curse variant, on when nullifying the uh, effective Curse, and I will be able to, to EQ the Muck if he does want to if he does come down to that, so yeah, it's a curse and a blessing getting that poison there. And uh, this turn he is going to bring in his Sceptile. Now, this is a pretty interesting play. Uh, he's going to reveal lefties on his Sceptile, which implies he's not he's obviously not like a Specs variant. And uh, yeah, the interesting thing about this bring here from Ace is that lefty Sceptile, the way he brought it in, I really think this is Subseed. Like, it's kind of screaming Subseed. And uh, it's it's definitely not a common set you see on Sceptile. Um, <laughs> definitely not in draft. You, you rarely do you see Sceptile actually drafted. So, um, but if you look at the makeup of my team and maybe what Ace expected me to bring to check Gallade, a sub seed a Sceptile really takes advantage of stuff like Unaware Clefable, which is a bit annoying for his team outside of uh, this Mon to really deal with and Mark, of course. So, uh, I really was expecting this thing to be sub seed. And even if he does have like grass coverage, I don't expect him to click it here. If anything, I expect him to sub or seed as it covers me going Nihilego or even Aegislash here. So I have really solid switches to like Leaf Blade on my team. So I don't think he's going to click it. I don't think he's going to be Giga Drain. And uh, right here, he is going to reveal the sub as I do just stay in an Ice Punch here in the face of this Scepter. So we're inside Ace's head. <laughs> we're reading him well at this stage. And he is going to go for the Leech Seed this turn as a double Ice Punch. And this is going to put him, uh, like, Ice Punch, this is why I wanted Ice Punch as opposed to, like, EQ Skull Toxic, because Sceptile could take advantage of this kind of quag, so could something like, um, so could something like the Latios, so, like, like a Mon that can dodge uh, Toxics and uh, it doesn't take much from EQ could really try and capitalize on the quag, but you already know, we've got the coverage, so <laughs> that's nice. And uh, after the Toxic and the Poison Damage and the Leech, I'm going to be left pretty low, but I still am out of range of... Mux knockoff, of course, so it's it's worth preserving this Quag, as uh, right here I am going to go into the Clefable, as the fact that he is sub-leech um, with lefties means he cannot do a thing to my Clef, and uh, he's going to reveal EQ here, which covered me going to Halego and the Aegislash there, so solid play, but Clef is the Clef is the check to this Sceptile, essentially, as uh, now he is going to go into Togekiss and take some rocks, as I am just going to fire for Moonblast, really contemplated knocking there, but on the off chance that he, that he did sub, uh, knockoff wouldn't have broken his sub and uh, Moonblast hit anything he wanted to go into. It also covered him going muck on the potential of knockoff there. And uh, getting more chip with Moonblast was overall better than me just knocking his non existent item off because I'd already knocked it off previously. And uh, getting a nice like 20 25% with the Moonblast plus the rocks. So, yep, Moonblast was my play there as uh, he is going to bring in his Togekiss. Now, right here, uh, he, he could easily roost up, like, roost is a solid play, um, but me going Aegislash or Nihilego is such a such a nice offensive play, like, I really lose a little by it if he is going to roost, even if he's going to air slash here, like, air slash is, um, is another play he could make, he could also nasty plot, so me going to Aegislash or Nihilego uh, would, would, would make sense for, <laughs> as, as a really nice offensive play, it would immediately shift the momentum back in my court if he did make some sort of offensive play, like, nasty plotting. But uh, yeah, I just had a feeling in my bones. My instincts were telling me, nah, this man's about to T-Wave. So <laughs> we're going to go into Chomp right here on the T-Wave, uh, which is really nice. So yeah, we, we catch him there as uh, he is going to get his lefties back. And unfortunately, he's going to dodge a Stone Edge here. So yeah, Chomp missing that edge is pretty nasty because now it uh, it doesn't give me information on this Togekiss. Uh, granted, if he was like a max max defensive variant, he wouldn't have died to that edge though it would have given me information on this Togekiss. If he was offensive, like, or if he was just like max HP, uh, there's a there's a solid chance he would have died to that edge there. So um, a bit unfortunate, but you know, that's that's what happens when you click edge. So now he is going to switch out into Toad as I am going to start firing off, continue firing off uh, stone edges. He's revealed 
to have uh, T-Wave, Roost, and then he's going to either have Stab or something to hit AG, or even Encore on his Togekiss. So I really don't think he can actually hit my uh, my Garchomp too hard. And uh, at this stage, he still has to respect the likelihood of Z Stone Edge from my Garchomp. So all those kind of factors affecting the way he wanted to play his Togekiss there, he is going to bring in his Toad, and uh, I'm going to start getting some chip off on this Toad. I'm going to click EQ here, as his Toad takes 40 from that, that's a nice respectable chunk, as he deals 32 back with his own EQ. And uh, right here, because another EQ won't kill, um, but a Dragon Claw into an EQ will kill, I am actually going to Dragon Claw here, because on the off chance he went into his Laddie or his Thundee, um, on my EQ, I obviously would have dealt no damage and it would have shifted momentum back into his court. Uh, granted, I do have fantastic responses to these two mons. I have no reason not to Dragon Claw here. If he goes into Togekiss to block the Dragon Claw whilst also being immune to the EQ, he puts himself into the same spot he was in two turns ago where he has to take an edge and roost up and still fear the Z Stone Edge. So, if he switches in on a Dragon Claw or an EQ, he actually is in range of uh, Z Stone Edge, so that's not something he can really fuck with there, in my opinion. He has to respect that, and uh, honestly, like if he if he lets this Toad get get whittled further, like if he lets it take another hit, it's in range of Sneak from my Aegis Slash at plus two. So <laughs> I really think he uh, he's in a he's in a bit of a tough spot here. He either sacrifices his last remaining AG kind of check, or he lets Thundee or Laddie take some damage here from the Dragon Claw. So you see, he does actually stay in and uh, let his Toad get weakened to the point where it's no longer a, a check to Aegislash, as now it is going to drop to the EQ. So Chomp is still Chomp is still at a point where uh, it's nice and healthy enough to check Muck, and uh, it can take a hit from uh, Sceptile depending on what coverage move it has, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm actually going to sack it off here to the Laddie, because um, in, at this stage, uh, Ace could have clicked Shadow Ball there, predicting my Aegislash to come in, he also could have made the double to Mark or something, predicting uh, me to go hard into my AG there. And uh, if he is, uh, either way, like even if he killed my chump there, um, this does award me a free SD. Well, not a free SD, but an SD up with my Aegis last year. If he is Shadow Ball, he cannot kill me. Like he, it'll do very, <laughs> it'll do very little to me, to be honest, because I am so spit F, and uh, I have a ton of yeah, I have a ton of spit F. And uh, this is this is a fantastic spot for AG to be in. This is the kind of situation I wanted to orchestrate with the way I played my clip early game, the way I weakened the muck and knocked it off, the way I got up rocks early. This is exactly the kind of uh, yeah opportunity I wanted my edge slash to have to put in work. So right here I am going to SD. As he's going to make the switch out to his muck, and uh, yeah I'm going to SD up now. I could have attacked here. I could have just clicked. Uh, could have clicked Iron Head. And uh, knocked out this muck as the fact that he, the fact that he, uh, <laughs> the fact that he dealt so much damage to my quag with knock earlier, um, really told me that he was adamant, like max attack, and the damage he took from Clef earlier with a knockoff um, informed me that he was like max HP. So there's no way, there's very little chance this muck had um, had enough speed to outspeed my AG, but <laughs> on the off chance that I did somehow miscalc. Um, the damage rolls and he is actually faster than me King Shield is my play even if it isn't like even if he is actually slower than me he may potentially have Shadow Sneak and going for King Shield awards me a minus two drop on Mark's attack so either way <laughs> even if um, even if he is slower King Shield is always my play here as uh, Muck is going to go for Knock and he's going to get the minus two and now, King Sh uh, now Shadow Sneak will be doing even less to me as I will be able to outspeed and kill him with the Iron Head so we were fast all along but like I said, in that situation, there was no, there was no, um, no drawback there. So uh, he is going to go into his Togekiss here, and right now <laughs> he's revealed T Wave, he's revealed Roost. Um, I expect him to have something like Air Slash or Dazzling Gleam on this set, and then uh, potentially Encore or Fire Blast, some some way of hitting Aegis Slash, uh, perhaps. Uh, right here, me going for King Shield puts me back into King Shield um, to a stage where I would easily be able to chew any Fire Blast from Togekiss. And funnily enough, like Ace doesn't know this at this stage, but I am actually really spit F. So even in even in my uh, my blade form, I actually live a max roll from defensive Fire Blast from Togekiss, which is pretty nuts. So uh, I'm in a situation where my best play is going for Iron Head. He, he's likely going to Encore me or T-Wave me here. So um, you already know. I'm going to read that T-Wave and click Iron Head. As uh, I think Ace really did expect me to King Shield there, um, because he didn't know my spread. Like maybe he felt that I wouldn't be comfortable with making that 
uh, like 50-50, which is what some people would call that turn. Although it wasn't a true 50-50 because I lived the Fire Blast anyway, and he was more than likely to click T-Wave there because it covered me going to Nihilego on a Fire Blast or an Encore. So this is like when people say, when people talk about 50-50s, I think a lot of the time they don't actually realize that certain situations aren't actually 50-50. Like a true 50-50 there would have would have meant would have been like if I died, like I, I would I would have to die to the fire blast in blade form and like lost the game at that point for that to be an actual 50-50. Like if if I had if I had checks in the back or if I lived that flamethrower, that fire blast, which I did in my blade form, that's not a 50-50. And I think that's this is what a lot of people like sort of misunderstand about that phrase. But anyway. That's <laughs> just a little side rant. Um, Aegislash gets the kill there, and right here he's going to bring in his Thundee. And uh, this is one of his Z-move mons, so I do expect him to have the Gigavolt Havoc as a way of breaking past Unaware Clef. As T-Bolt into Gigavolt Havoc has a pretty solid chance of killing Clef, unless I predict him right with um, with uh, Protect, of course. But uh, right here, I, I have a strong feeling he's going to Z-Electric, and uh, me King Shielding up, um, and as a result taking very little from uh, Gigavolt Havoc and then Iron Heading him the following turn, underspeeding him because of uh, because I'll be in um, obviously Parod and I'm just naturally slower than <laughs> Thundy. Um, I can get the Iron Head off and follow up the Sneak to kill this and essentially wrap up the game with plus two Sneak, uh, securing the 5 0. But uh, unfortunately, he is going to get the full para on my AG as I do King Shield and he is going to knock me out with the Z Gigavolt Havoc. So yeah, very, very unlucky. Uh, I'm not getting very lucky this game at all. And Age Slash would have would have actually killed, um, yeah, would have actually killed five mons. But unfortunately, the para stops my AG from sweeping there, so that's pretty unfortunate. But the reason I was okay with making that play, like, yes, I could have gone, I could have gone Quag, like realistically, I could have gone Quag on the on the obvious like electric attack there. But it was it was well and truly in my favor for me to King Shield there for me to break through. And even uh, even if I lost AG there, I still had uh, methods of winning this game. Also, was he, were he a sub variant or like yeah, like some sort of sub taunt variant or something like that? A sub variant uh, could have capitalized on paras from my um, from my AG and uh, would have played mind games with with the stance change. If he was like some sub setup variant, uh, because I am not nasty plot, uh, because I am not unaware clef. Could have uh, potentially been a real threat to the rest of my team. So me staying in there and King shielding up um, was uh, was my play because had I gone Quag, he could have capitalized on that with sub into Grass Knot or sub into like uh, some sort of move that would have been able to kill Quag after Rocks with uh, poison damage. So my Quag would have been really low at that stage had I switched in on Thundee. So ultimately staying in there with Aegis Slash was my play, but unfortunately we get punished by the 30% power chance as. Um, as now I'm going to bring in my Nihilego, which is going to scare up this Thunderous as he's going to sack off his Sceptile, so don't have to worry about any more sub seed shenanigans from this thing, as he's now going to bring in his Latias, which at this stage, I don't know the item on Latias, but I have a feeling his choice, because the way he's been playing it, it just kind of implies it, but I don't know much information on this ladder yet, so I am going to sack off my Quag. It's not achieving a ton this game, and I do have Nihilego around to check Thundy. Uh, so Latias is going to take that out, and now I'm going to go into Clef, and I'm just going to click uh, click Moonblast this turn, as um, any damage off on that Laddie forced him in range of um, any attack from my uh, my Nihilego. If he was Specs, I would have uh, gained that information from the damage he dealt to my Clef had he stayed and attacked, and if he was Scarfed, uh, the same would have been the case. Um, but he is going to switch out here and let Thundy take damage, which is really nice. It's going to put him in range of rocks. So essentially now. Uh, once I once I beat Thundy, he's just got the laddie left, and uh, right here because I got hacked because I've been getting hacked a ton this game. I don't want to go for Calm Mind and potentially get double crit, which is definitely a possibility. Like if I Calm Mind now and he crits me, and uh, and I'm down, I'm going to be down like around like thirty percent. I know I'd be around uh, around thirty six times two point one point five. Yeah, I'd be around I'd be around forty five, maybe fifty percent after lefties. He could potentially crit me again, like double crit. It's a very, very low chance of happening, but uh, I don't need to play the Calm Mind game. Like, I don't need to at this stage. I can win by playing it safe, and that is what I'm going to do, because he's going to go for the T-Bolt. I'm going to take him out with the Moonblast, and uh, I will be able to take out this Laddie by sacking uh, my Medi. So, the, the reason I sack Medi here is because if he Specs, he's going to Oko my Medi. That is the only way he can kill me with Psychic. Um, if he is Specs with Trick, 
he can potentially trick my clef uh, and uh, if he if he can live in moonblast and start roost come money up uh, he could be a threat he could actually uh, win because my nihilega wouldn't be able to uh, revenge him with a calm mind up so he would also cripple my clef so clef is no longer a check to laddie and my medicham would be outsped so i'm just going to make the play into into medi it affords him information and prevents him winning with the trick so uh, right here uh, he is going to go for the psychic and that's going to oko my medicham which uh, <laughs> confirms to me that this is specs laddie which is pretty interesting specs laddie versus a team with ag slash um, if he was like spec shutterball, that could have been a really nice way of weakening AG. Um, but I really do think that it was pretty exploitable because it granted AG a free SD every time he clicks Psychic. So um, I, I'm really curious to hear Ace's thoughts behind that. But uh, here, I'm just going to go for the... I think I go for the knockoff this turn. As uh, if for some reason he doesn't... If for some reason he can't kill me um, with... If for some reason I can't kill him with Dazzling Gleam, like he's some ridiculously, uh, <laughs> ridiculously fat laddie spread, um, I will be able to 2 a KO him and he won't be able to kill me with neutral psychics. So uh, what should have been a 5-0 <laughs> is unfortunately going to go down to a 1-0. Um, but, you know, that's all right. That's just that's just what happens. That's why people run T-Wave. It's, it's, it's a broken mechanic and uh, <laughs> we really saw that here. But yeah, very, very happy with the way this game turned out. Uh, I really felt like I was in Ace's head. <laughs> this game and yeah it was very fun to see the team come through edgy unfortunately not getting the 5 sweep that it would have got but i did not get parried but yeah that 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 happens um yeah definitely a good game to ace i think he had a pretty tricky time dealing with Aegislash, slash honestly um though I, I was chatting with him a bit after the game uh i really i really don't agree with the way he sacked off his toad i think he should have maybe had some wish support for toad be it from togekiss or ladias i think that would have really helped him preserve the longevity of toad and maybe maybe allowed it to perform as a better uh, a better ag check throughout the game but you know that would have opened him up to other sets like you can only run so many moves on togekiss and i know he wanted to run togekiss check uh, togekiss set that would be able to check um stuff like carmine clefable and uh, swords dance Aegis slash of my own so he really had to account for you know more than just Aegis slash so um, that kind of held him back I guess from running that kind of uh, wish supporting set but yeah maybe that would have been uh, maybe preserving his toad and not letting it get so whittled by Garchomp would have been uh, would have would have helped him there in the late game but either way that's going to be uh, that's going to be the game versus Ace definitely go and check him out I'm going to leave his channel in the description below as well as all the other coaches from the MPL majors so yeah, go and check him out, go see his perspective of the match. Ace is a yeah, very, very good player, and I'm sure he's going to do great this season in the majors. So that's going to be it. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments, and drop a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time.